Welcome back to Tech Trouble Busters. Tired of shelling out cash for premium music streaming? Love the idea of open source software? Well then, oh, okay. this is the deep dive for you. For sure. We're taking a look at open source music streaming apps for Android. Specific apps. Ones that can tap into YouTube music as a source. Nice. Think ad-free listening, offline playback. All the goodies. Unique features, all without those pesky subscription fees. Yeah, you got it. We've got five awesome apps on our radar today. SpoTube, Harmony Music, mm -hmm. Vine Music, yeah. Inner Tune, yeah. and Re Music. Sounds good. So let's jump right in with SpoTube. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, how can an open source app play music from Spotify? Right. Well, SpoTube doesn't actually directly connect to Spotify's servers. It's sneaky. It uses their public APIs, which... Anyone can access those. Yeah. It's like, um, think of it like peeking through an open window okay. instead of like barging through the front door, right? I like that. You're not really supposed to be there, but you're just taking a little peek. You're peeking. Exactly. And Spotube then combines that data with audio from various sources. Okay. Like YouTube, Piped.video, mm -hmm. or even Geosavin. Wow. So this gives you that that Spotify like experience, Rarified. you know, playlists, discovery features, mm -hmm. the whole shebang. You got it. But you're not actually streaming from Spotify directly. That's pretty good. I mean, so it only works on Android then? That's the cool part. No, it's in incredibly versatile, actually. Oh, really? You can get it on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android. Wow. And even iOS. Whoa, hold on. Though so iOS. So you could have to sideload it on an iPhone. Okay, now sideloading, that's a word. Yeah. That might make some people's eyes glaze over a little bit. Sure. Can you break that down for us quickly? Yeah. So basically, sideloading just means installing an app on your phone. Okay. Without going through the official app store. Gotcha. It's a bit more involved, but yeah. totally doable. And there are plenty of guides online that can help you through it. Sweet. No problem. Now, another thing I noticed about Spotube is that it boasts native performance. Yeah. What does that mean for someone who might not be right. super tech savvy? Well, it all comes down to how smoothly the app runs, right? Okay. Imagine you're using a computer program mm -hmm. and it constantly lags and freezes. So frustrating. Uh, yeah. A lot of these cross-platform apps like SpoTube, mm -hmm. they use a framework called Electron. Uh -huh. It's convenient for the developers, but yeah. it can make apps feel a bit sluggish. Oh, Spotube's developers, they they went a different route. Right. They built it natively, nice. meaning they basically tailored it specifically for each operating system it runs on. So it's like a custom tailored suit. You got it. Versus an off the rack one. That's the perfect analogy. Nice. That's why Spotube feels snappy and responsive no matter what device you're using. I like it. But it is worth noting that it doesn't currently support podcasts. Oh, or Spotify's listen along feature. Gotcha. So it might not be a perfect replacement for every Spotify user just yet. Yeah, fair enough. But let's say podcasts aren't your thing. All right. And you're ready to explore more options. Yeah. What about harmony music? Mm -hmm. I hear it can handle music from both YouTube and YouTube music. It can. Which seems like a pretty big advantage. Absolutely. That opens up a massive library of music. Yeah. And you're not limited to just listening. Wow. You can create radio stations based on your favorite artists <sighs> or genres, uh -huh. build and manage playlists. Nice. And even download songs for offline playback. That's pretty awesome. A lot packed into one app. Definitely. All that. And it's built using Flutter, right? Right. That makes that a good thing. So Flutter is a framework that's known for creating smooth, responsive apps. Okay. And the cool thing is they work seamlessly across platforms. Nice. Think of it as like a universal translator for app code. You write it once and it runs beautifully on Android, iOS, web, you name it. So that explains why Harmony Music feels so polished. Yeah, it's a pretty slick app. I'm curious about the licensing though. Mm -hmm. Being open source, are there any restrictions on how people can use or modify it? Well, there is one key condition. Go ahead. Modified versions of Harmony Music can't be used for commercial purposes. That makes sense. Yeah. So you're free to tinker with the code and make it your own. Okay. But you can't turn around and sell your modified version. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Now, shifting gears a bit, mm -hmm. let's talk about Vi Music. Okay. It's not actively developed anymore. Right. Which might make some people think it's obsolete. Sure. But 
I have a feeling there's more to the story. Oh, absolutely. Fi music may be archived, okay. but it's far from forgotten. Okay. It actually played a pivotal role in shaping this whole landscape of open source music streaming. Really? Yeah. You see, Vine Music was a pioneer. It was one of the first apps to successfully tap into YouTube music for streaming. Wow. Which paved the way for a lot of the apps we're discussing today. So it's like the grandparent of the family. Uh -huh, yeah. Still influencing things even from retirement. Exactly. What was it about Vine Music that made it so special back in the day? Well, for starters, it had a killer feature set. Think offline playback, Ooh. which uh. is essential for those times when you're without internet access. Right. It also had synchronized lyrics, uh -huh. so you can sing along to your heart's content. Nice. And for those who like to fall asleep to music, yeah. it had a built-in sleep timer. Oh. Uh. It even supported Android Auto. No way. Yeah, which means you could enjoy your music seamlessly in your car. That's quite a list. No wonder it was so popular. It was definitely ahead of its time. But if it's not being developed anymore, does that mean it's just a relic of the past? Not at all. That's the beauty of open source software, right? Okay. The code is still out there, right. freely available for anyone to explore, to learn from, or even to build upon. That's awesome. And in fact, that's exactly how some of these other apps came to be. Oh? I remember yeah. ReMusic, the one with the multilingual support? Yeah. It's actually a fork of Vine Music. A fork. I feel like we're getting a bit metaphorical here. Uh -huh. Can you explain what that means in the software world? Sure. So think of it like um, a branch growing off a tree. Okay. A fork is basically a copy of the original code uh. that developers can then modify and develop independently. Gotcha. So our music took the foundation of Vi Music mm -hmm. and added its own unique twist by expanding the language support. That's really cool. So even though Vi Music might not be the go-to app anymore, right. its legacy lives on through these forks. Yeah, exactly. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more app I want to touch on. Okay. Intertune. Right. What makes this one stand out from the crowd? Intertune is all about a modern ad-free experience. Okay. One of its biggest selling points is that it lets you play songs from both YouTube and YouTube music. Nice. Without those pesky ads interrupting your groove. Oh, yeah. Who wants to be bombarded with ads when they're trying to relax and listen to music? No one. Absolutely not. And Intertune doesn't just sound good, it looks good, too. Oh, okay. The developers have embraced Material 3 design principles, mm -hmm. which is Google's latest design language. I see. So this means you get a visually appealing interface that's sleek, nice. modern, mm -hmm. and intuitive to use. I'm a sucker for a well-designed app. For sure. So I appreciate that attention to detail. Yeah. Plus, I see it also has synchronized lyrics, a lyrics translator, and personalized quick picks. Yeah, they really thought of everything. They did. But there's one important caveat to keep in mind with Intertune. Okay. If you're in a region where YouTube music isn't officially supported, right. you'll need to use a proxy or a VPN to access it. Ah, uh, that makes sense. It's all about those regional restrictions. Yep. Now, we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. And I imagine some listeners might be feeling a bit overwhelmed by all these options. Understand. So let's take a step back and do a quick comparison. Okay. If you had to pick a favorite based on what we've discussed, mm -hmm. which one would it be and why? Ooh, that's a tough one. It really depends on individual needs and preferences. Of course. But if I had to choose, I'd probably lean towards Harmony Music. Oh, okay. I think it strikes a great balance between features, ease of use, and performance. Yeah. The ability to stream from both YouTube and YouTube Music is a huge plus. I agree. And the fact that it's built with Flutter uh -huh. ensures a smooth and responsive experience across different devices. Okay, so Harmony Music gets your vote. It does, yeah. But what if someone prioritizes, say, yeah. native performance above everything else? In that case, Spotu would be the clear winner. Okay. Its focus on native development means it feels incredibly snappy and responsive. Right. Which can make a world of difference when you're navigating through menus and searching for music. And of course, if multilingual support is a must-have, then Rhyme Music is the way to go. Exactly. It all comes down to what matters most to you as a listener. True. The beauty of open source is that you have the freedom to choose the app yeah. that best aligns with your needs and preferences. And with that, we've come to the end of our deep dive. We have. Into the world of open source music streaming apps for Android. It's been a pleasure exploring these innovative solutions with you. Before we sign off, I just want to remind everyone yeah. that we've included links to the GitHub repositories mm -hmm. of all these apps in the show notes below. Check them out. So if you're curious to learn more, 
contribute to their development. Yeah. Or even just peek under the hood of the code. It's all there. We encourage you to check those out. Absolutely. And remember, the open source community thrives on collaboration and shared knowledge. That's right. So if you find an app you love, mm. consider contributing to its development. Yeah. Or even just spreading the word. Right. Even a simple shout out on social media can go a long way. Absolutely. Every bit helps to support these fantastic projects. It does. And keep that open source spirit alive. Keep it going. Well, folks, that's a wrap for this deep dive and into the world of open source music stringing apps for Android. Hopefully you discovered some new options to break free from those subscription fees. If you enjoyed this deep dive, be sure to give this video a like. Yes. And subscribe to Tech Trouble Busters for more explorations mm -hmm. into fascinating tech topics. For sure. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Yeah, ring that bell. So you don't miss out on any future episodes. Definitely. We love hearing from you. We do. So feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts, yeah. suggestions, yeah. or any requests you have for future deep dives. Let us know. Until next time, happy listening. And happy troubleshooting. Keep it going.